now I just start speaking. Okay. My name is Agustin Leon de la Barra. That's uh, the, the full name. It's a big, bigger name than that, but let's let's keep it at that. I had the chance of uh, meeting John, Jim Morrison when he was in Mexico. He came to Mexico right after uh, the concert in Miami where he was taken to court because he jerked off in, 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 the, in stage and he had no authorization to play anywhere in the United States. So these guys that owned a, a very fancy uh, club for people that went there to listen to artists like Tony Bennett or Nancy Wilson. That type of music was the one that was played there in the photo. So all the guys that went there had to pay a lot of money. They had uh, the show and dinner and uh, drinks and they all went in suits. So this was this didn't make any sense. No? Bringing the doors to a place like that was really incredible. The reason, the main reason they brought them is because they were very cheap, because they didn't have anywhere else to play, so they uh, agreed to, to go there and play for, for less money. No? Uh, when, when everybody knew about that, all the kids, teenagers or young people that were fans of the Doors convinced the fathers to invite them to see the Doors. So most of the people in the, in the audience uh, had, um, uh, were families, no? father, mother and kids, no? and all dressed in suits. No? Uh, it was really something out of the mind, out of, out of, out of, out of place, no? totally, totally com compared to what uh, Jim Morrison and the Doors were doing. No? Uh, when he arrived to the airport, he came first in a, in a plane before the rest of the band and all the equipment. And he came first in a... In a, in a, in a so he was... Um, he, he, uh, there was a public relations woman that went to the airport to receive him. And that woman uh, was perfect for people like Tony Bennett, Nancy Wilson, and all, all the crooners and that were coming to. But she was not uh, 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 ideal to meet uh, Jim Morrison. She couldn't understand him. Uh, she uh, really got scared a little bit because he was already with long beard and uh, a little bit fat and whatever, no? and uh, not very clean. No? And uh, so she called the, the son, and I was with the son at that time, and said, please come and help. No? So we went to the, ho the hotel, a very small hotel, very fancy hotel, and met with him at dinner. No? When we sat there, the mother went away, so we, we stayed there with him at, during dinner time. And he, um, he ordered, I, I have that perfectly in my mind, he had two margaritas, he had two soups, two salads, two uh, 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 plates, two uh, main, main plates, and, uh, and during uh, the, the meal he had two bottles of wine for himself. After we end, ended dinner, he asked for a bottle of, um, of uh, brandy or cognac or something like that. No? So they said, oh no, sorry sir, we're closed. No? And, and uh, he, he turned around to us and said, tell them I can buy the hotel if they want. No? So we convinced the guys to sell him a, a bottle of, so he could to take that to his room. During dinner, he asked us about a lot of things from Mexico, and one of them was something that really impressed me because he said, uh, this uh, country is uh, mostly Catholic, no? And I said, yes, about 90% in that time, not anymore, but in that time, 90% were Catholic people. And he said, they're going to uh, uh, confuse, they're, they're going to think I'm Jesus. And I said, oh my God, this guy, what does he think he is? No? So he went away drunk as hell to his room. Next day, when, with all the rest of the band, we went to... I was driving the limo uh, at that time, and we went to the pyramids in Teotihuacan. It was a, a, a heavy uh, cloud day, very cloudy day. So we went to... to uh, he was fascinated with the, with, with the pyramids. 
and it started raining. So we gave him a, a, a sarape, you know, and he put the sarape on his head you know, and started walking to avoid the rain. You know, and started walking, and there was a, a, a little Indian uh, um, a, a woman you know, selling little idols uh, made of uh, clay. You know, and she turned around and saw him with this, and she said, Aparición Jesucristo. Jesus Christ. <laughs> she, so he was uh, right. He was right. <laughs> no? I was impressed about that, very impressed. No? That was one of the main... Uh, the, the rest is how he got uh, uh, stoned all the time. Uh, he drank like hell. We stayed uh, at uh, the back of stage where the big uh, sound uh, uh, equipment. No? And my job was to fill his glass with tequila. No? And every uh, song he sang, no? after he finished, he went and gave a really big drink. No? So by the end of the show, he was really uh, drunk. And it was amazing to see all these families, no? the fathers uh, with, with their eyes like that, no? and, and the kids shouting and everything. And when he uh, uh, um, sang this song, This is the End, no? and where it says that, uh, Father, I want to kill you, Mother, I want to fuck you. When he shouted that, all the kids were like this. And the, uh, and the fathers were amazed to see what uh, uh, type of guy were they, they took to see their kids. Very conservative uh, families. No? One, uh, on the second show, we went out uh, on the back door and it was full of people uh, that they didn't have the money to go in, no? but they wanted to see Jim Morrison and it was a, a big... Uh, uh, show of a lot of people, no? and uh, we sort of uh, like bodyguards, not trying to open space for him to, to take him to, to the to the limo. And there was one guy that suddenly uh, uh, came out of the of, of the crowd and gave him uh, a bag, no? and he, and told him this for your music, Jim. And Jim got it, no? went into the in the limo. What is this? No? And uh, we explored it, and it was uh, mushrooms. Huh? Oh my God! And he started eating <laughs> right away, without asking if there were <laughs> if there was a poison in the night. He didn't care about that. He then um, was two days uh, enclosed in his room because of all the things that he had uh, inhaled and whatever, no? and eaten. And uh, two days later, uh, it was. It was a Monday, and uh, uh, the most important museum in Mexico, the Anthropological Museum, was closed. So, uh, and the son of uh, the son of the president wanted to meet him. So uh, we said, let's open the museum so he can meet no people around. No? So we went just by by ourselves with a group and all the. Uh, uh, to the museum, uh, so he could uh, meet the son of the president, which is, which was a, a big fan. No? In the museum, there is a, a fountain, like uh, a big column that has uh, water coming all around. No? And he thought that was very uh, funny, no? uh -huh. so he sat on a, on, a, on a wheelchair and said, push me all around. No? So we got soaked and went all the, all the way around. No? Uh, the other time uh, we went to, a, to, to eat to a Mexican restaurant and uh, the guy Ray Manzarek yes. said, we want to try or, or test all the, all the music, why don't you bring one plate of each plate that there's in the menu. It was a very bu big, big menu. Mm -hmm. And there were singers that sang uh, uh, music from Veracruz, the Jarochos. No? Mm -hmm. They were incredibly impressed by the food, uh, the, the hot food, <laughs> and, uh, and the Jarochos that were playing there. 
those are the memories I have. Uh, really an amazing uh, experience. And the very uh, much more uh, uh, normal experience with the rest of the group. The rest of the group went with their uh, wives or girls or whatever they had. Each one had their their uh, significant other by mm -hmm. themselves, mm -hmm. and uh, they they were fantastic people. We had a good, very good uh, relationship with. Uh, Jack, which was the guy that was filming all the events and everything. And we, uh, finally they went away, we kept those memories. And uh, two or three years later, we went uh, to, me and my friend, the guy that we, we went to Florence and we stayed there for a, for, for a month or so. He stayed there to, to study. And walking in the street, we met with Jack. Yeah. Wow. And uh, and he told us about all the event that had, uh, happened in Paris when he died. Right. It was really an amazing thing, and that, that's my memories I have from here. Would you call it an impactful event in your life? Of course, of course. Uh, you, you, I don't know if that happens to you, but it happens to me that I have a lot of years gone by, you know, and there are maybe. 20 years out of my life, which I have no recollection at all of what happened. Those, what did I, what, what was I doing in 19 whatever, no? But that memory kept on my mind forever. No? The, I have a friend, the friend that, uh, the, the son of the real public relations, the one that took me and uh, uh, to all these events. Uh, we talk about that and uh, maybe we have different recollections of what happened. No? Each one has its own version. No? But most of, most of it is more or less like I, I uh, uh, told you. Right. Mm -hmm. That's amazing because I remember you telling me this story over uh -huh. 20 years ago and that's the impact the story had on me. Mm -hmm. And then, I, and then I, I recalled it in a dream the other night and that's when I reached out to you. Uh -huh. Well, I thank you so much.
Like the gentle rain that falls. 